Welcome to GFN Gaming. I'm Russ, and in today's game, we're going to venture into the dark with a game of Kill Team into, into the Dark. It's a bit on the nose. Today's game will be a rematch. My Nurgle Legionaries will take on the Intercession Squad, but this time using those tasty close quarters rules. We're going to be playing the first mission from the book, Reinforced Chamber. Here's the board layer and the deployment zones. In this mission, you can score victory points throughout the game by performing the one action point, Action Power Up, which can be performed on one of these terrain features. You can perform this on a dormant terrain feature, the player gets one victory point, and then the terrain is no longer dormant. And at the end of the battle, a player gets two victory points for each sector that they control. These are the sectors, and as always, you control a sector if you have more APL within that sector. I've said sector too many times now. This was my second and my opponent's first game of Into the Dark, so with all the excitement of playing this, we actually forgot to do the scouting phase after we deployed. Anyway, that's the mission, so now let's have a look at those juicy teams taking part, starting with the Chaos Nurgle Legionaries. Yes, I'm using Nurgle Legionaries again. I know this makes me a whack player and a dirty meta chaser, apparently. I maintain that I just like the models and always have, sir. Honestly, <laughs> I don't even like winning. I mean, not that I have much of a frame for reference, anyway. Leading my Nurgle Legionaries is the Legionary Chosen. I know there's probably a really good argument for that hitting on 2's Plasma Pistol, but I just really like the Demon Blade, and so I'm going to use him. Not a great choice, possibly. But always a great choice is the Balefire Acolyte, only getting better in Into the Dark, now getting a lethal 5 plus on Torrent, so Blast is now getting a lot better. Anyway, I love my little Plague Vapor, so let's move on. Is never not been good, the Plasma Gun has always been good, so of course I'm bringing a Legionary Gunner, and I'm arming him with a Plasma Gun. I'm also going to equip him with the Malefic Blade, just in case he needs to get into combat. One of my favorite models from the team is the Legionary Anointed, and I know that Into the Dark, this guy can actually get locked in a room because he can't open doors, so part of me is kind of wanting this to happen. I'm going to fight for it not to, but I do want it to happen. So, I've gone for a heavy gunner with a heavy bolter. My gut says I should take the missile launcher just because I like them more and I feel like I have more options with a uh, missile launcher, but here we are. I wish he had a different gun, he wishes he was being piloted by a capable player, no one's happy. He also has a suspenser system. Now my favourite conversion and model is the Shrive Talon, and because I like the model I've given him the most equipment. That's, that's how it works, right? He has a frag grenade and the warded armour and looks schmick. Hopefully it should go without saying, these guys are all Mark of Nurgle. Now for my opponent's team, which is not even breathing heavily from the last time he fought and he kicked all 17 shades of shit out of my legionaries, is the Intercession Squad. Led by an Assault Sergeant who is armed with a Power Fist and a Flame Pistol, he also has a Tilting Shield to cancel out any of that Lethal 5 Plus or Rending bullshit. Next up, he has two Assault Intercessors, and honestly, I hate these guys. Still super salty, they have a built-in Fight Twice, a P1 Pistol, and a Chainsaw rocking a healthy 3 hits kill almost everything 4-5 damage profile. Next up are two Intercessor Warriors armed with Bolt Rifles for that P1, and they have built-in Shoot Twice with a stonking 14 wounds like all the others, so not to be sniffed at. One has an Ore Specs, the other has Reclusium Blessed Bolts and a Combat Blade. And the final operative for the Intercession Squad team is the Assault Intercessor Grenadier. Obviously getting that free grenade pack and being an Assault Intercessor gets a lovely chain sword and he can fight twice built in. For chapter tactics, my opponent opted for movement, taking rapid and durable to dull my critical hits a little. Okay, so let's get into the game. We're in turn one, so let's get into the initiative phase and have the first roll off. I win the roll-off, so I'm going to opt to be the attacker for a change, and my opponent is going to pick this deployment zone, and then we place our barricades. My opponent lines up his six chunky boys right next to the hatchway so they can race into the sectors, and I pretty much do the same. I match deployment, picking the operatives I want to face off against each other. Squad Color Mastering methodically works its way through the remnants of the vast Space Hulk, narrowing down their search to the immediate area ahead of them. With the power source vaguely located, they smell, then taste their foes drawing closer. The feculent sons of the traitorous Mortarian slowly march forward. The Death Guard look different, more specialized. Good. Wouldn't want it to be too easy. 
Assault Sergeant Calamastron smiles grimly as he barks out his orders on the squad comms. It's a turn one strategy phase and both players get a command point, bringing them up to three. No pre-game strats were used, so let's have a look at the draw. Using security but dealing in some seek and destroy, my opponent ends up with central control, route and headhunter. I like the cut of his jib, so I'm going to do the same, but I am stung by the cards. I end up with central control, plant banner and execution. My shrive talon will be given the banner. I have the initiative, so I'm going to go first and I'm going to play mutagenic flesh for free with my favorite of the dark gods. And my opponent plays nothing, so let's move in to the firefight phase. Oh, 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 the firefight phase. Sing it, boys. I'm going to move my legionary chosen forward, open the hatchway, and then get up to this ancient tech, and I'm going to activate it, powering it up for one victory point. It's a similar story on the other side. The grenadier is going to move forward and activate for one victory point. My Shrive Talon is going to move through this hatchway next to this old tech and power it up for one victory point. My opponent charges into this room with an assault intercessor hiding behind this bit of terrain looking for a charge later in the game. I move my heavy gunner forward and I'm going to plant him here and guard. Using guard this way means I can cover this area and if any model ends an activation within my field of vision, I can overwatch. My opponent moves a rifle guy here who activates this old tech and guards. Holding off on demon mode so I can open the door, my anointed races forward, grabbing some cover. So, this is a little bit of a mistake. We had initially thought that because the operate hatch action doesn't interrupt movement, that it just gets added to it that it didn't count as an action that would trigger guard. However, upon rereading the rules, operate hatch is definitely an action and as such would trigger my heavy gunner's overwatch. So as far as we understand it, essentially the move would start. During the move action, a separate operate hatch action starts and finishes, at which point I can interrupt with guard, and then assuming the model lives, the move action would then continue and end. But that's not what we did, so this assault intercessor gets a free pass to this cover, staying in conceal. Back to me, and I'm going to move my plasma gunner inside this room and also guard. Taking advantage of the rapid chapter tactic, this intercessor warrior moves and dashes into this sector and guards. This is probably too ballsy a move for a Monday morning, but I'm going to move my plague vapor into this sector, soaking up that overwatch like a putrid grief sponge. Eyes on target, sergeant. Take the shot. Four shots hitting on fours because it's overwatch. Not gonna lie, I don't even feel slightly bad about that. We're in a tightly confined corridor and I have a wizard ready to play. I cast Fireball, but the kill team equivalent, so instead I'm using Fire Blast. It's had a bit of a buff and into the dark, so now I get lethal five. Right in my happy place. Just one hit. And the little devil's wearing power armor, so I can imagine what's gonna happen now. Ah, there it is, two saves. It's too much of a feel bad. I use one command point for veteran of the long war and I do it again. With my lethal 5 plus, I get two crits, and with splash, that's two mortal wounds straight away. My opponent gets two saves, using them both to cancel one crit, and with durable bringing my crit damage down, it's six wounds, leaving him with six remaining. Back to my opponent for the last activation of the turn, and it's just a shuffle and pass, not wanting to risk overwatch from the plasma. So that's it, the first turn is done, let's have a look at what happened. Both sides making moves towards the center of the kill zone, with the legionaries being slightly more aggressive, although the scores are still level at two points each. They don't get scored until the end of the battle, but currently the top sector is contested. With three bodies to one body in the middle sector, this is held by the legionaries. And outnumbering the legionaries in the bottom sector two to one, the intercession squad have secured that area. I'm a bit light on the bottom area, but I think stacking in the middle will help me score central control, so that's my aim. Let's move in to turn two. Moving into the turn two initiative phase now, and let's roll off. The intercession squad win, so they'll have the initiative as we move into the strategy phase. Turn two strategy phase, and both players get a cuddly plague bearer. You come anywhere near me, and I'll cut you. Starting with the Intercession Squad, and they're gonna play Assault Doctrine, getting a reroll if they've charged in combat. Then it goes to me, and I'm gonna play Mutagenic Flesh using my favorite of the Dark Gods free stratagem. My opponent passes and is back to me, and you know what, I'm gonna use Hateful Assault just in case I need to fight twice. Onto the Tac Ops, and it's back to my opponent, and then they're gonna play Rout. So they're gonna be looking to kill people close to my deployment zone. Back to me and I'm gonna play Central Control. I've got that mid sector so it should be fairly easy to score. 
Nothing left to do in the strategy phase, so let's move on to the firefight phase. My opponent has the initiative and I realise I've pressed too far forward with my Balefire Acolyte and he is in range of an Assault Intercessor and my opponent charges in and that sinking feeling starts. It's possible that I could survive one round of combat but unlikely that I'd last two and that's exactly what he gets. The Assault Intercessor gets five attacks hitting on threes with a reroll because of Assault Doctrine. Doesn't need it, ends up with two crits and three hits. The Balefire Acolyte's no slouch, it's five attacks hitting on threes and any crits will cause two mortal wounds. It's a pretty abysmal roll but there's two crits so that's four mortal wounds before we start. The Assault Intercessor parries as do I and that leaves three normal strikes going through for three damage because of mutagenic flesh. Nine damage in total brings me down to three and then the Assault Intercessor strikes again. Misses with two but gets the Assault Doctrine reroll and that's a hit. So my opponent ends up with four hits but no crits. It's not a great roll from me, but I do at least get another crit, which will mean another two more wounds. But with a minimum damage of three, the first strike from the Assault Intercessor will take my Balefire Acolyte out of action. Losing the Plague Vapor this early on is definitely a bad move on my part. Might need to play more defensively. This also gets my opponent their first victory point on their secondaries for Rout, putting them in the lead. Time to put some pressure on my opponent, I go full demon with the anointed and then barrel him towards the group of intercessors. In demon mode, this guy can fight twice with lethal 5 plus and ceaseless on top of his built-in rending. Five attacks, hitting on threes. With his newfound lethal 5 plus, this ends up as three crits and one hit, but with rending, that's four crits. Not a bad start. A standard intercessor warrior gets four attacks on threes, hitting with his fist, and that's three hits and one crit. First off, I get rid of the crit with a parry and then the intercessor strikes, dealing what would be two damage with mutagenic flesh, but I forget this, so I roll three dice on my disgustingly resilient, passing one. I deal what would be five damage, but with durable is now four damage with my crit, and then I take another hit for three damage and roll my disgustingly resilient, getting none. Another hit from me dealing four damage, and then I take the last hit again for three because I forget mutagenic flesh, making one this time. I then strike again, leaving the Intercessor on two wounds, and I have to fight again. We don't capture the dice rolls, but I get at least one hit, killing the Intercessor straight away. And for argument's sake, I should probably be on around seven or eight wounds, but that was my mistake. So, it's not an ideal combat. I had to fight twice, and I had to make three more disgustingly resilient saves than I should have. I got a little unlucky, and I'm now down to five wounds, so it's not looking great. Back to my opponent and it seems like he's going to try and jump on the chance to secure the bottom area so he moves into range with his Assault Sergeant and fires with his Flamer Pistol. Torrent got a boost also giving it lethal 5+, plus, which doesn't deal any more damage but does make it harder to stop that damage getting through. Hitting on 2s with the Hand Flamer and ends up with 4 crit because of the lethal 5+. plus. I make 3 save, Disgusting Vigor would turn one of those into a crit save which would mean I could save 2 of those crits, but we don't catch it in time because it seems like secretly I'm out to kill my Anointed, so we only get rid of 1 of those crits and I roll Disgusting Resilience, making 2 so I live on 1 wound. Why do you hate me? Then my opponent taking full advantage of the rapid chapter tactic giving an extra triangle movement, dashes back towards the center of the kill zone. Looking to tie up the score, my Shrav Talon moves onto this objective, powers it up for one victory point, then guards. It seems like curtains for the anointed, this grenadier activates and he's gonna throw a crack grenade which surely will be the end. The name's not Shirley, it's Barath. Four attacks hitting on threes and that ends up as three hits. AP one, so only two defense dice. Gets one crit save, which brings it down to two hits, and with mutagenic flesh, this is six wounds in total. Obviously he's dead. I mean, come on. It's a shame, obviously I think I've been just too aggressive pushing some characters too far up the field and they just got countered, so goodbye, anointed. And with the rest of his activation, the Grenadier is gonna move and race towards that inactive ancient tech. Back to me, and I need to do something good, so I activate my Chosen, and I'm gonna shoot this purple right in his golden face. Not overcharging, because if I do, obviously I'll roll 11 wands on four dice, which would be equal parts impressive and depressing, but I get two hits. Dropping a stinking turd in my happy place, my opponent makes both saves. F you. The plasma pistol has failed, but the demon sword never shall. I charge in and fight in combat. 
The Assault Intercessor still has 8 wounds remaining, so this is going to be a minimum of 2 hits to kill, but with a bit of luck, it won't hurt me too much. So right here is an example of doing good quick maths. I go first and I have a crit and 2 hits, which means I've won, but instead I use a reroll. I'm still not sure why. The heat of the moment, perhaps? Anyway, I end up with a crit and 3 hits, which is one more than I need. Dumb move aside, my opponent gets a crit and 2 hits, and I strike with a normal hit, dealing 4 wounds. So, I've hit with my normal first, because if I can finish him off with a crit, I get 2 wounds healed. There's no reason for my opponent to block my crit, because I have enough damage on a normal attack to kill him anyway. So, he's just gonna have to hit me for 5 damage with his crit, and then I can kill him with my crit, healing 2 wounds back to me in the process. So at the end of the combat he's dead and I am only on 10 wounds, 3 down from where I started. It would have been nice to take him out with the plasma pistol, but at least now the model count is equal on both sides. With unparalleled supreme confidence in his remaining assault intercessor, he then charges into my on guard Shrive Talon, which feels to me like suicide. So basically after his charge action completes, I get to interrupt with a free fight action of my own, so I initiate a fight sequence as the attacker. It's not a great roll, I end up with 3 hits and no crits, and my opponent gets 2 crits and a hit. Probably should get a reroll with Assault Doctrine, but we missed it because we were a bit confused, but he has charged. I deal 3 damage, and then my opponent hits back with 5, and my smile fades somewhat. I do quick maths in my head, and then I parry his next normal strike, and then I eat another 5 damage, dealing back 3 in return. Seems fair. Now that my free fight action has concluded, we return to my opponent's turn, and after his charge, he chooses to fight. As now the defender though, my Shrive Talon does get to go first, which is something at least, because after Assault Doctrine reroll, he now has 3 crits and 2 hits. Honestly, at 2 wounds remaining, even though this looks like a sh** roll, it's the best I could hope for. I go first and I deal my 1 crit damage, only dealing 4 due to the durable chapter tactic, and then I take a thumping. This sucks. My favourite model has been thoroughly trounced, and to make things worse, he now drops the banner. What a lemon. Faced with two gunners, it's unlikely that a guard will be useful, so my opponent then, for his last activation, fires with his bolt pistol at the heavy gunner, who is just in range by a bee's wiener. Shout out Reese. He is now injured, so needs fours, ending up with two, and I do make two saves, so much like Ben's favourite type of shower, I am golden. So with that attack done, it moves back to me, and I'm going to activate my Plasma Gunner. He's not going to overcharge, although the urge is there, but I am going to fire at the Assault Marine. All I can say was a good job I didn't overcharge. I end up with a crit and a hit. AP 1, and it makes two saves, but is going to use a reroll and actually gets a crit, so he's fine. What a piece of shit. It's that kind of annoying luck that kills me, I've got nothing left to do, so I'm gonna charge him. I've got the Malefic Blade, so I might be able to kill him anyway. All I need is one hit, and I'm a Space Marine, so I hit on threes. The Malefic Blade is five attacks hitting on threes, and I get four hits, one is a crit, so it doesn't really matter what the Assault Intercessor rolls, although he gets three, my first hit kills him. With that kill from my Plasma Gunner, I am now unopposed in the central area with my Heavy Gunner and Plasma Gunner, and with that charge, my Plasma Gunner is now securing central control, assuming he can stay there. The following footage has since been redacted by the Inquisition because it was pure heresy. This Intercessor shoots twice at my Chosen Legionary and ends up only dealing two wounds. Both sides use rerolls, but the footage was too disgusting to be made public. Also, it got lost or damaged, or maybe my camera died. Whatever. In the last turn of the game, my heavy gunner walks forward and picks up the banner. That's it, that's the end of turn 2, so let's have a look at what happened. Lots of charging units this turn, and each combat was fatal. Three deaths on each side, leaving both forces down to half strength early in the game. So far, there's very little movement in terms of who controls which area. The top area is still contested, with my legionaries holding the mid section with two bodies, and my opponent's intercession squad still hold the bottom sector. In terms of secondaries, the intercession squad have scored one victory point for rout with this kill, and my plasma gunner has scored me one victory point for central control, pushing my score up to four as I take the lead, albeit a very slim lead. I've had to reveal plant banner, which is now being held by my heavy gunner. 
I think at this point, central control might win me the game, but it does all hinge on me killing the intercessor in the top section as if my opponent holds two at the end of the game, they could still win. Let's get into turn three. Into the turn three initiative phase and it's time to roll to see who gets initiative and it's me. Legionaries have initiative so we'll be going first as we move into the turn three strategy phase. Both sides get a command point and then we're going to have a look at what strategies and tack ops are going to play starting with the legionaries as I have initiative. I still have my favorite of the dark god so I'm going to use mutagenic flesh for free. Honestly into the dark though does mean implacable is a really good option. Anyway my opponent then uses assault doctrine again for that reroll in combat if they charged. I've got no tack ops to play and my opponent reveals central control, which I'm guessing is just done because he's got nothing else to play. I doubt he's gonna get it. Anyway, let's move into the firefight phase. It's my first activation and I need to make sure that I can secure that top sector. So I'm gonna activate my chosen. He's gonna move forward. He's gonna overcharge his plasma pistol and he's gonna fire because I need this guy to be gone. So I need that AP too. It's turn three, but the dice guards are finally with me. No wands, no crits, but with durable chapter tactic, it doesn't make too much of a difference. He gets one save, but three hits go through, which is more than enough to take him out of action. However, my opponent drops one CP on Wrath of Vengeance, which, wait, Wrath of Vengeance? Damn, that's a bad name. Anyway, he plays Angry Revenge, so he gets a free shoot action before his angry ass gets dragged off the board. He is injured for this though. Gets three hits and I get two saves, which technically is a save and a crit save, but that leaves one going through, which isn't enough to kill me, but does leave me with six wounds. With my remaining action, I just kind of dash forward behind the crates for no, no real reason. Maybe, yeah, he likes the crates. My opponent moves his Grenadier onto this ancient relic, powers it up for one victory point, and then he passes. I'm gonna yeet the banner all the way to their deployment zone with my heavy gunner where he's gonna guard just in case he then gets charged by Power Fist Man. After his charge, I'm gonna interrupt with some point blank Overwatch, a pew pew. Pew pew. Point blank Overwatch, so I'm gonna shoot with five dice looking for fours because it's Overwatch getting a hit and a crit. Now for the defense dice and he gets a save and a crit save. So nothing happens and now he gets to fight. That was well worth it. He gets three hits and a crit, but we forget the Assault Doctrine reroll, and I end up with three hits. This bit is a bit messy. I get hit for seven damage with the crit. I then parry. A wooga, a wooga. This is a mistake because the Power Fist is brutal. He then strikes and Mutagenic Flesh saves me, and we remember brutal, so we redo the combat in our heads, and it ends up with a dead Heavy Gunner and the Assault Sergeant on nine wounds, having taken two hits. And then to rub salt into the wound, the sergeant then destroys my banner for one action, denying me some last minute victory points. What a scumbag. He is however now wide open for a plasma ring, and that's damn straight what I'm gonna do. Overcharging because I want this sucker dead. Let's go. Four attacks hitting on threes. I do see that one, but I've been keeping a CP for this very reason, so I reroll it. Isn't a hit, but that's a crit and two hits at AP2. It's the final insult, the final countdown, the black parade. He fails his save, so the sergeant is dead. For his remaining activation, he's just gonna pass where he is. No point guarding, it's the end of the turn and they all get reset. But that's it, that's the end of turn three, so let's have a look at what's happened. Not a lot of movement this turn, but there's only six models left in the game. Speaking of which, three of those six have died this turn. In terms of the areas that are controlled, the legionaries now secure the top area. They're still holding the middle area as they have done most of the game. And likewise, most of the game, the intercession squad continues to hold the bottom area. For the second consecutive turn, I have held the center of the kill zone, getting another point for central control. However, with this death plant banner is no longer an option. My banner has been destroyed. However, I finally get to reveal execution, having finally killed more than were killed in a round. That's it, let's move in to turn four, the final turn. It's the last turn, we're in the initiative phase. It feels more like a formality that we need to get it done, but I win the roll off, but I think it's gonna be a quick turn. We're gonna move straight into the strategy phase and both players are gonna get a command point. 
In terms of the strategy phase, there's not a lot happening. No one's going to be playing any Tac Ops. I do still have Favor of the Dark God, so I'm going to play Mutagenic Flesh, although Implacable is obviously another great choice. Nothing else gets played, so we're going to move straight into the last turn's firefight phase. Let's roll. I think we could probably just talk through this turn, but as it stands, no one can really do anything to any of the other operatives. So basically, all of the operatives are just going to pass where they are, and the game is basically over. Holding the top two areas, the top two sectors, are the Legionaries, getting two victory points for each area for a total of four victory points, bringing their grand total up to nine victory points. My opponent holds the bottom sector, getting two victory points, bringing their total up to six. At the end of the game, my opponent reveals Headhunter, having not scored that or Central Control, getting just one victory point for route through the entire game for their secondaries. All of my tack ups have been revealed during the game. I was only able to score Central Control. However, I did max it for two victory points. So at the end of the game, Legionaries take the victory in a very bloody game, winning nine points to six. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and a huge shout out as always to my patrons for helping to support the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.